we want to uh, transition again, and now we want to talk a little bit about uh, the goal. And you know, we our goal is to to teach boys and girls to to pray, to give, and and some of them are called to go. And uh, I would lo love to have maybe Paul. Could you talk a little bit about the importance of uh, nurturing that call? Because that can come at any time. It can come. It can come all the way, you know, in elementary, early elementary school, up through high school, college. But how do we nurture that call in boys and girls when they're young? Um, what are some thoughts that you may have on that? Yeah, I mean that's. I think that's one of the biggest challenges, and I think number one is is just simply, I I would say relationship. Uh, there's a girl, who is in sixth grade now, but two years ago she, felt like I I think I'm called into ministry, maybe even kids ministry, and so of course I'm encouraging that, and I'm like, yes, that's probably it. You can start tomorrow, you know, like, but I you know I think I think being close enough or having people and leaders that are close enough to even hear those things i you know i think sometimes we want people to just walk up to us and share those things with us and sometimes that happens but usually proximity is a, a great way to at least have a chance to even hear some of those stories um honestly i think you know over the years mark camp has been a huge part of of kids being called into ministry and to missions and so man anytime we can get our kids to camp where they're spending a week dialed in, focused on, on Jesus. You know, there's 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 something to that. They can hear and sense, you know, the spirit of God calling them somewhere. Um, and you know, I think those are those are super important. You know, and I and I guess I you know I wrote a couple things down of just bringing other people in or exposure. I think anytime we can get missionaries in front of our kids that's that's always going to be a value anytime there's whether it's a video that's being played or whether they're in person man i'm like how can we get that in front of our kids and in front of our youth um you know so i think those are some ways nurturing i think we have to affirm when we do hear them being called into into missions sometimes we can think um well we'll see you know and not that we ever verbalize that but um but man sometimes we can say well you know you're eight years old let's see what god does but i think i think affirming that and 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 celebrating that and and when you do that involving parents to say hey you know what i don't know if they've told you yet but we we're super proud super excited that i'm here's you know here's the news that they told me i would love to hear what a conversation sounds like with you guys at home like so next week i want to hear you know and you're, you're you know you're almost helping parents get to hey you should have a conversation with your child about that and i want to hear about it um and then i think giving them opportunities and you know and honestly this can be this can be difficult there's there are many ways you know and maybe involved in the giving part where they can practice that or live that out but gosh we're trying to think of ways to get our kids serving as early as possible and so um uh you know what are the simple ways that they could just get involved? Whether that's, hey, you know what? Every time we pray for a missionary, would you be willing to come up and just and pray a prayer for that missionary? Talk about fostering a heart, you know, in that child, and um, and and honestly, it helps and it uh, puts in front of the other kids a, a peer who is not only excited but actually feels called. And I think that's a very powerful thing. They can hear from us adults all the time. But man, anytime we can get a child who who senses a call into missions in front of our kids, even just simply praying, reading scripture, or sharing about how they got called, what do they say? In order to change culture, you have to tell um, whatever culture you want to establish. So we want to we want to tell stories about being called into missions. We want to ask questions of, hey, have you been called into ministry or missions? And then we want to celebrate when that happens. Um, and so I think those are three simple ways that we could kind of create a culture of that. And, and, yeah, and one thing I'd add to that, I think I love that celebration and f trying to figure out ways that when, when a child hears God give them a dream that we as adults get out of the way and help them see that happen instead of being the bottleneck 
in what God is trying to do in them and through them is saying, how can we, how can we nurture that call and how can we help them and how can we affirm what God is saying in their heart? And because obviously, you know, maybe they're 10 years old, they're probably not going to go to China, you know, at 11, right? It's probably not going to happen, but how do we, how, but, but maybe God's called them to help a neighbor. You know, let's help facilitate that when God says something to their heart, how do we help facilitate that? So I think that's really important. There are people that are important in our children's lives. Parents are super important in helping nurture that yeah. call. Children's yeah. pastors, children's leaders are important in helping nurture that call. Um, the lead pastor is super important in helping nurture that yeah. call. Um, even that passing off of the child from children's ministry to youth ministry is saying, hey, you know, Billy's got a call of God on his life and just yeah. reaffirming that. Um, yeah. I mean, imagine Mark, you, you know, a child tells you and then you go around over the course of months and any, any time you're with that child and a leader that hasn't heard, you're like, Hey, this is so-and-so. Did you ever tell them about what you felt like God was saying to you that just involving others or walking up to the lead pastor or to the youth pastor and saying, Hey, you're gonna be super excited about Joey's coming because Joy, why don't you tell them what you felt like God told you? You know, I mean, you're just you're you're constantly involving other people to promote that idea of being called. And um, man, you know that's that's tough to argue with. You can't you can't argue with someone else's call. You know what I mean? And it's a really powerful thing when it's a child. Yes, absolutely. And so, and and us praying. For, for them mm -hmm. and praying that God would just continue that call. Because you know how it is. The seed falls on the ground. Thorns mm -hmm. are going to grow up. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it may become, the ground can become hard. We have to help nurture that seed and uh, water that seed. Um, one of the things that when I was um, over in Africa a couple of years ago, one of the things that we noticed that we kind of lacked was maybe some literature just to help boys and girls that are called. And I wanted to bring this up. I think I can show it right here. Uh, this is uh, from myhealthychurch.com. Uh, they have these Now What for Kids, and they've had one for Now What for Kids Salvation. They've had one Now What for Kids Baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the last couple of years, there is now the Now What for Kids Called by God. And uh, you can order that from My Healthy Church, and it's a great resource for children's leaders to just say what do we, what's next what what can you do to help nurture that call so those are some important things <laughs> anyone else um steven yeah. or jen oh, it, uh, oh. Go ahead, steven. yeah i wish i had that book i mean i it was 10th grade at spencer lake when i got called into the ministry to be a senior pastor and so i i uh <laughs> that was uh i was very lucky to have my dad who was uh not only a mentor of mine but he was also a senior pastor and so he guided me, but man, it would have been nice to have resources like that. And so just like you put that up on the screen and my, my heart went, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm going to probably just go get some just to have in my office just in case. Like, so, you know, yes. that happens in my church or around or you just take them to a camp if I'm counseling or something. So, yeah. Well, and uh, we will have those at camp as well so that oh, awesome. people have those available, but bring your own too. That's good. <laughs> hey. Trent and Tina, could you guys tell us a little bit about your calling to ministry? Yeah, I, I was going to say just to follow up on, on this last subject is um, like I grew up in church. I grew up in Royal Rangers and, and some ways I got church and my parents are Christians. But uh, honestly, I never thought about being in ministry. I never had no desire to be a missionary. I didn't know anything about that. My parents were not in ministry. And I think what the, the key is, though, is having those kids in church. They can they continually, continually hearing about missions, hearing about God, hearing about the call. But it's always teaching those kids to just say whatever you hear God telling you to do, just say yes and be obedient to it. And I think that basic thing in my life is what kind of, you know, you get to a point, you get 17, 18, 19. You're like, hey, you got to actually do something with your life. You know, what are you going to do? And I remember I was 19. I'm like, well, I thought I was going to do, you know, be an electrical engineer or something, but that didn't work out. So now what do I do? And so it wasn't until I was like 19, I'm going, God, what do you really want? But it was only because of that past experience as a child, as a youth, that I realized I, that's that's I got to listen to what God's saying. And I, I need to be obedient to what he wants. And I, I just 
I, I really feel like that that is a really key thing. I believe God calls a lot of people. I just believe a lot of people ignore that call and do not fulfill because they don't want to do that sacrifice. But I believe God calls a lot of people. And uh, I just, I, 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 he's calling out who will go, who will help, who will be a part of his master plan. And uh, so anyway, uh, my call, I honestly, I, I mean, the, I'll be completely honest. I had no desire to be in ministry whatsoever. And I felt like the Lord told me to go to Bible school. And I didn't realize that if you went to Bible school, most likely you're probably going to be in ministry. But I knew I was going to miss the will of God <laughs> if I did not go. And uh, that is where it all started. And from there, everything just began to you know, go, you know, one call after another call after confirmation. So uh, that my wife is a little bit different. You know, she had the call that she's going to be a missionary and she was baptized in the Holy Spirit on a mission trip to Mexico. And uh, she was all, I'm going. I don't know if you're going with me, but I'm going. Yeah. And then after our first term, she's like, I, I don't know if I want to go back. You know, I'm like, what do you mean you're going to go back? We got after all these years and all that. And so, you know, like I say, it, it's it's one thing saying yes, it's another thing uh, doing it. it. But uh, but the call is a permanent call, and it's with you, and it, you can't get away from it. And it's God's divine plan for your life and His master plan. And so, uh, that's just the key. I, I just wanted to share it with kids. I think kids, God's starting early, and and uh, He keeps He keeps talking and asking. If uh, being a missionary, if I was back in the States and being a, a children's pastor again, and if a child told me that they wanted to be in ministry or become a missionary eventually, um, with all the technology that we have nowadays, I would, if they can get prepared, like if they can just tell their own story, like how they got saved and, and like practice it or even I, don't, I know in the states you guys don't do much with puppets although here in latin america they still love puppetry and so um any kind of like ministry type thing whether they're on like a praise and worship team or but if they can get used to just even telling another child you know like how to get saved or um that I just kind of feel that would be great if they're already getting used to that. And even if like you guys do the little video announcements and stuff, any possible way that a child that feels like they're um, that they're called into ministry or even missions, any of those opportunities. Um, I mean, if, if I was to go back and be a children's pastor now that I definitely would just get them in to any type of uh, helping out or where they already feel like they're already taking those little baby steps of being in ministry, no matter how minuscule it might really be. But to them, you know, it's a, it's a big deal that they have some form of responsibility, but on the spiritual end of it, that they already get used to um, talking about the Lord or talking about how they were saved. Um, I think would be great. We've got our light back. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't even turn my lights on in here, so, so <laughs> forgot about that. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I think is really important for us is to give kids just the opportunity to have time to hear from God yeah. and uh, to spend time in prayer with kids and spend time where they can actually hear what God is saying. Um, <clears throat> I think proximity is huge, and if, if they're in the proximity of God, he's going to talk to them, and we we um, need to give them those opportunities. I think that's what, probably one reason why camp oftentimes is a place where a lot of people say, that's where I was called by God. Mm -hmm. They just they spend more time at camp in the presence of God than they do a lot of other places, and I think God wants to call them in their bedroom. He wants to call them in their living room. He wants to call them in the church. Um, he wants to call them in the gym while they're at school, wherever it is, uh, just spending that time listening to him. Um, we, uh, we're, we're about that place where we, we want to wrap this up. Uh, we've talked about developing a, a, and cultivating that heart of compassion and for those that need to know Jesus. And I think, hey, Adair just joined us. Adair is... Uh, my admin, and she might have a couple questions that she wants to join. She has been on the live feed for a little bit, and she just joined us. Um, <clears throat> but just wanted to reiterate that missions is the heartbeat of God. And as we teach boys and girls the importance of missions, we teach them to consider others before they consider themselves. We teach them the importance of 
giving. We can teach them the importance of, of praying. We can teach them the importance of, of even going, putting themselves in the position that maybe, maybe, maybe God's going to call me. Maybe it's not. He's not calling them to go across the ocean. Maybe he's calling them to go across the street. And th th those are important calls for, for all of us. Uh, Adair, are you ready to maybe ask a couple of questions? Do you have a couple of questions you want to ask anyone? I do. And I guess this question could be anybody that wants to jump in. Um, everybody can answer it. So lots of great information. 100%. I agree with everything that you said. But the one question I think I have is for someone who is on the fence about BGMC, what would you say should be the first step to do to promote BGMC in your church if you're not already part of BGMC? Okay. Uh, the, the, the first step. Anyone, what, what would be your first step? I would say look for a, a project um, that you connect with, and that's part of the reason why um, right away I connected with uh, Trent and Tina when we met them in December was because of their project with their camp and knowing how important like camp was to me. And it was a really important thing to our kids. And so um, connecting with a project for me and then reaching out to those missionaries and either through email or Facebook or whatever, if you can access them, um, having conversations with them just to get to know them a little bit more and putting that in front of your kids and explaining what that is. And then from there, I, I'm telling you, you put that in front of your kids and it's gonna be like, they're, mm -hmm. They're super excited. Like our kids every Sunday pray for Trent and Tina and oh, um, their giving has been like just in these two months, our kids have already given over $550, like just offering. Um, so yeah, I would say put projects, put a project in front of them, pick something that you know would resonate with them, would resonate with your lead pastor even um, so they can get behind you and what your community could kind of like pull behind. Yes. Any other questions are there? I think you got them. There you go. Um, I guess one question, I guess, there maybe advice is more or less for this. Um, any advice on what to do if you as a kids pastor see the vision, passionate about missions, um, how do you get the rest of your staff on board? Lead pastor, associate pastor, anybody. How do you get everybody on board so that the church as a whole is passionate about missions? Paul, why don't we have you answer that one? All right. Um, I, you know, I guess first, I, the first thing that came to my mind when you asked that question is, I, we probably don't have to convince our lead pastors to get on board with missions, you know, and <laughs> Stephen, right? I mean, so, so I think to be able to say, uh, in, you know, I, but, but I think we can struggle sometimes with saying, hey, we want to do this project or we want to do these specific things. That may be more the struggle. So, because, I mean, all of us, that's why we're doing this, right? We want to reach the lost. We want to reach kids. We want to reach families. And so, you know, I think I think saying, okay, what is the commonality or what is our philosophy as a church um, to be able to say, do we want to do want to dial in? Like, does, is there a certain missionary that we're focusing on? Is there a certain region that we want to dial in on that maybe we, you know, we didn't do last year, but we want to do the you know, to be able to catch the heart of, of our lead pastor, I think is super important. Um, and so, so I would, I, I would have conversations, just a lot of conversations. And, and instead of maybe sharing what I think, you know, we need to do as a church to be able to go and just ask questions of the lead pastor and say, Hey, you know what, here's, here's what I'm thinking, but I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of, you know, uh, this or, Here's a few ideas. Are there any one of these that sound like it might be more like our church than the others? You know, like the other ideas. So, I think I think going in, being you know teachable and ready to hear direction, and also asking questions, would probably be a good start at least to a conversation with the lead pastor. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd second that, Paul. That that you know maybe you're teaching a Sunday school class or a Royal Ranger group, and you you have this great idea. It's always <laughs> always wise to bounce those things off your lead pastor first before you announce it to the church. Hey, this is what we're doing. Um, so I'm just telling you from experience <laughs> that it's always a good idea to ask first. And, and, uh, cause, and one thing I, it's interesting, Paul, is people call my office a lot, or even you can call down to BGMC to 
hey, are there any special projects that, that we could partner with? Um, and I know one thing that I, I kind of reiterated this earlier that I try to do is projects that I know that, that kids that are kind of hands on that are that, you know, that they're tactile, that they can see it, they can feel it, they can touch it, they can taste it, you know, those are the types of projects that, that I really think resonate with kids. And I think that I'll try to have them be bite size as well. Something that we know we can do. Like last year, we did the water filter project. It was an $18 project for a family to have a, a water filter that may last up to 10 years. Clean drinking water. Every child can say, I can get, buy an $18 filter. And, and so every child can do that. And I try to say, what kind of projects are like that? Now, there are times we need to dream really, really big, you know, and say, hey, we, we need to knock off this building. We need to see this happen. And so I think we do do them all, but I sure love to see have things that I can show them at the in the end that this is what we did. And so and I was so so excited when um, I was going to tell you this about the Go portion, and I think this is important. Is that last year we had John and Marissa Paulson who were part of our network um, and are still part of our network. They were called to Africa, and they just in the last couple of months were able to go to Africa. And in doing that, uh, they have been able to be part of this water filter project. They sent us a video last week that we're, we were able to show at Kids Blast of them implementing the water filter project in a village. And they're teaching them how to use the water filter. And then they're telling them about the living water of Jesus. How practical. How awesome is that? And so... Uh, you know, Trent and Tina, one thing we'd love to see happen is that we're going to see pictures of boys and girls in, from coming from all corners and areas of Uruguay to camp and learning about Jesus and being able to get out of the elements and not have to, to uh, have rundown facilities or facilities that need touch-ups, that God's going to take care of this for you guys. And so we want to partner with you and, and we want to show those pictures. We want to celebrate those wins because when they see that, they say, Hey, we, we did this. Let's do something else. Let's do something great and awesome for God. Amen. And, uh, you know, I like to think of missions in this, this way. I like to think of missions is that when, whenever I am uh, sleeping at night, there's missionaries across the globe who are still working on God's behalf. And so when I invest in missions, the sun never sets on the ministry of God when I invest mm -hmm. in missions. And when we teach boys and girls to do that, I believe that we are going to see a generation of boys and girls who are selfless. Who That's our my goal is that they would be selfless and say, we need to spread the gospel, that we would fulfill our founders' dreams to become the greatest evangelistic force the world has ever seen. And we have to cultivate that in the heart of children. And so I, I just want to thank all of you for, for being part of this effort to do this. You know, everything from being a lead pastor to being a kid's pastor to be a family pastor to being a missionary, that you've all been part of this. And so I'm so grateful for, for you uh, for being part of this. I would love to lead us in prayer for just a moment and uh, as we close out tonight. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your heart that you loved this world so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. Lord, I pray that as we send missionaries around the world, that we would love the people around this world enough that we would sacrifice in, in prayer, in giving, and some of us even going so that we can see, have, see others know Jesus. Lord, I pray that it, whether we are um, work in the nursery, we work in a midweek program, we work in children's church Sunday mornings, in outreaches, that we're always thinking that, that there are boys and girls that uh, love you, that would love to partner with what you're doing around the world. Help us to be creative and crazy sometimes to see cool ways to raise money that will inspire kids to say, I can do this, and God can do this, and God's going to do this. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Trent and Tina, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, maybe you heard this, but this last year, uh, BGMC had their greatest year of giving 
average emissions over ten million dollars. Boys and girls mm-hmm. gave to emissions, and uh, we're not looking backwards. We're going forwards. Uh, yeah. The boys and girls of Wisconsin Northern Michigan gave over two hundred and two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars to emissions, or two hundred forty-five thousand dollars to emissions. We're looking to go three hundred and fifty this next year. Wow, uh, dreaming big. And so, Jen, we decided we're going to do something uh, crazy and awesome if we do that. I'm- you decided we were going to do something. And all my kids on Sunday reminded me of that. So I'm, I'm thinking right now, Stephen, that maybe we need to bring that some chicken wings are in our future. I was like, oh, crazy and stupid. I got one for you. It's going to be yeah. in November, December. Right. <laughs> I think Taco Bell mild sauce is hot. I would oh, die. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mark. Hey, you could always do like a, a polar plunge for everyone along the lake. I heard yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. Not that I've ever done that before, but Mark did. I did. I've done two of them. Done one I've myself. Done two of them. It had to had to saw through two feet of ice before I could get in the thing. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. But it wasn't as cold as your stuff was hot, I believe, Steve. <laughs> so, well, thank you all. Um, if you guys all could stay on with me, but everyone else who's joined us, thank you for being with us. Um, coming up in our next uh, Kidman training to go, we have um, Carl Bastian, the kidologist, is going to be with us, and he's going to be talking about Kidman basics. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, anyone who joins the Kidman training to go before – Carl um, teaches us um, coming up in April. Uh, you can have a three-month all-access membership to Kidology.org, a premier kids ministry site. So uh, join up, be part of uh, Kidmen Training to Go. We, we're, we're excited to have you part of that. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>